In this video, we're going to describe how rocks undergo weathering. So weathering is the breakdown of rocks. What? Yes, rocks break down too. They're not special. And I oh. Okay. So it is the breakdown of rocks at the Earth's surface by the action of rainwater, extremes of temperature, and biological activity. It occurs as a response to the low pressure, low temperature, and water and oxygen rich nature of the Earth's surface. Erosion is different from weathering because erosion is the process by which soil and rock particles are worn away and moved elsewhere by wind, water, or ice. So basically, they have agents, okay? So that's the main difference. Here, we're going to talk about the two types of weathering, mechanical and chemical. Okay, so let's start with mechanical weathering. Mechanical weathering is just like crushing a tablet. Okay, when you crush a tablet, it's still the tablet, but it is powdered, okay? So the tablet in mechanical weathering is like the rock. Okay, so in mechanical weathering, physical forces breaks rocks into smaller pieces without changing the rock's mineral composition. So for example, this rock. It just becomes smaller, but the composition is still there. It's still that rock, but smaller. So remember, mechanical weathering increases the surface area available for chemical attack. So knowing that, chemical and mechanical weathering occur simultaneously. Okay? There are processes that lead to mechanical disintegration. The first one is the frost wedging. This is when water gets inside the joints. Then, alternate freezing and thawing episodes pry the rock apart. Okay, so remember, water expands 9% as it freezes. Okay, so when water works its way into cracks or voids in rock, then it freezes, the water expands and breaks the rocks into angular fragments. So the important process here is the alternate freezing and thawing. Next, we have the salt crystal growth. It is the force exerted by salt crystal that formed as water evaporates from pore spaces or cracks in rocks, which can cause the rock to fall apart. So it looks like this. Next, we have abrasion. It is the wearing away of rocks by constant collision of loose particles. So it is best described by this picture. If you notice, the wind charged with sand hits the rock. Then after some time, part of the rock will be polished. Then the rock will rotate and the cycle continues. Next, we have the biological activity. This is caused by plants and animals, including humans, as agents of mechanical weathering. So the first one is the plant roots. They grow in the fracture of rocks as they search for dissolved minerals. As roots grow, they wedge the rock apart. Next, you also have the burrowing animals. So moving the fresh materials to the surface, decayed animals and plants produced acids. So when they poop on the rock, the poop has acids, which will cause the rock to break. Okay. Or sometimes they also, you know, like dig a hole, then put their food there. So it also causes mechanical weathering. I mean, is that allowed? Next, let's go to chemical weathering. So let's go back to the acid. Ah, let's go back to the tablet. So when you dissolve the tablet in water or aqueous solution, the tablet reacts with water, yielding other substances. So it's same with chemical weathering. So when rocks undergo chemical weathering, they produce other substance. Chemical weathering is the transformation or the composition of one mineral into another. So they are chemical processes which convert constituents new material or release them to the surrounding. So stable substances are substances unchanged if they remain in similar environment. Okay, so take note, 
that in chemical weathering, water is the most important agent of chemical weathering. Okay? Also remember that pure water is non-reactive. Now, there are major processes of chemical weathering. The first one is dissolution. So, it is the dissociation of molecules into ions. Common example includes dissolution of calcite and salt. Next, we have the oxidation. It is the reaction between minerals and oxygen dissolved in water. We also have hydrolysis. It's the change in the composition of minerals when they react in water. Okay, it's different from oxidation. Okay, so first, let's talk about dissolution. So this is the main equation in dissolution. So water and carbon dioxide react with calcite. Then, it will yield calcium ion and a bicarbonate ion. So biological activity in soils generates substantial carbon dioxide. It is important to know that bicarbonate is the dominant ion in surface runoff. That's why I said earlier that water is the most important agent in chemical weathering. Because as you can see, soils generate CO2 and when they combine, they will produce substances that can dissolve calcite. Okay. Next, we have the oxidation. Oxidation occurs when an ion in a mineral structure loses an electron to an oxygen ion. Okay. Oxidation is common in iron-bearing and rock-forming minerals. For example, ferrous iron Fe2 plus oxidizes to ferric iron Fe3 plus. So what happened here is that it lost an electron. So this electron most probably was captured by an oxygen ion. Okay. So oxidation accelerates rock decay, rendering it more vulnerable to other forms of weathering. Next, we have hydrolysis, basically water plus mineral. So one of the most common reaction is the conversion of feldspar to clay. So feldspar is the most abundant mineral on earth. When it combines with carbonic acid, this will form a clay. But where did carbonic acid come from? So from rainwater plus carbon dioxide, which is emitted by animals, people, and other things, carbonic acid will be formed, which will yield clay, which is the most abundant sediment. Okay, so this slide shows you the effects of weathering. So this can lead to climate change. Now let's talk about the factors that affect the type, extent, and rate at which weathering takes place. So first, we have the climate. So areas that are cold and dry tend to have slow rates of chemical weathering. So weathering is mostly physical. Chemical weathering is most active in areas with high temperature and rainfall. Cold and dry, slow rate of chemical weathering. So water is the most important chemical weathering agent because it increases the rate of weathering. In high temperature and high rainfall, there is a high rate of chemical weathering. Okay? Remember this. So another factor that affects the extent of weathering is the rock type. Okay, so the minerals that constitute rocks have different susceptibilities to weathering. The susceptibility of minerals roughly follows the inverse of the order of crystallization of minerals in the Bowen's reaction series. Okay, so this is the Bowen's reaction series. This is a means of ranking common igneous silicate minerals by the temperature at which they crystallize. So, recall that temperature is an important factor of mineral formation, right? So, olivine crystallizes at high temperature, while quartz at the lowest temperature as compared to the other minerals. So, therefore, Quartz is the most stable on surface conditions, meaning low temperature conditions, while the other minerals in the series would be less stable. Nani? Olivine would be the least stable. 
So limestone, however, will have high susceptibility to weathering even though it is formed at surface temperature because it can be easily dissolved in water. So this just means that olivine, which crystallizes first, is the least resistant, whereas quartz, which crystallizes last, is the most resistant. So basically, they have indirect relationship. Okay. Next, we have the rock structure. The rate of weathering is affected by the presence of joints, folds, faults, and bedding planes through which agents of weathering enter a rock mass. Okay. So look at the center and the faults. So agents can go through there. Highly jointed or fractured rocks disintegrate faster than a solid mass of rock of the same dimension. Why? Because again, agents go directly to the joints or fractures. Next, we have topography. So be careful on this because this is a very tricky factor. Physical weathering occurs faster when the slope is steep due to the higher slope's susceptibility to mass wasting. And the higher rate at which new materials are exposed to agent of mass wasting wash away weathered materials down slope. Okay? So basically, higher slope, higher susceptibility to mass wasting, and higher rate at which new materials are exposed to agents of mass wasting. However, in gentle slopes, the rate of chemical weathering may be higher. This is due to the fact that water is an agent of weathering may stay longer in gentle slopes. Again, gentle slope, high chemical weathering. Higher slope, high physical weathering. Okay, that's it. Now we also have time. So the length of exposure to agents of weather determines the degree of weathering of a rock. So longer time of exposure to weathering agents could mean higher degree of weathering processes have occurred. So the rock has been weakened, therefore it is easier to break. <gasps> that was a lot. Pardon me? <laughs>